Hey guys, Paul here, once again the Analog Archivist with VHSCollector.com, here to bring you another VHS review, of course. And today we are talking about a movie called Self Defense. This was released by Media Home Entertainment in 1989. The movie itself was made in Canada in 1983. Now this movie has two other alternate titles, The Siege and Night Warriors. Far better titles than this. Self Defense kind of sounds like a tutorial instructional video. What an awful title. And that might describe or explain why this movie is quite obscure. This movie on IMDb only has just over 100 votes and only 6 reviews. So it's quite obscure and it's kind of disappointing because I think it's actually a really good movie. It's really thrilling, suspenseful, fast paced. I think this movie was meant to be in like real time so it just keeps you along. Now when I watch a lot of these movies that I review, I have to slog through it, man. It's just, a lot of these are boring, they're, they go along the typical formula, especially some of these horror films, but this was quite good. Around this time in the, uh, I guess it was mostly the 70s, but also the early 80s, they had a lot of these type of movies with anarchy in the big city type movies, but um, or crime or vigilante movies like Death Wish or something, but this one is quite good. and. I suspect it kind of suffered because of the awful title, right? Self-defense. What a boring title. I, I, I just, I could see why the alternate titles were The Siege and Night Warriors. Those are the titles used in other regions to promote this movie, but self-defense, really? Let's look at the cover here. The cover also sucks. It's kind of like a Photoshop job. Of course, they didn't have Photoshop then, but uh, they just took a bunch of screenshots from the movie and kind of just cut them together. Really boring. There is actually a theatrical poster for this movie, and it's far more interesting than this. I don't even think the two characters on the poster are in the movie. I don't think it's supposed to be them. This is just awful. They really should have just used the original theatrical poster. So I could see why someone would pass this on the shelf at the video store, right? I could only imagine that is why this movie fell through the cracks. Has this ever been on DVD? I don't think so. But let's read the back here. A once safe city becomes a welcome to hell war zone when the police force goes on strike, unleashing a nightmare reign of senseless crime and unspeakable violence. Savage bands of paramilitary goons lay siege to the city, immune to the threat of law and order, because there is no law and order. Until now. United only by fate and fear, an unlikely group of brave citizens take matters into their own hands, defending themselves, their home, and their loved ones. They declare all-out war, vigilante style. Fighting to survive, they are pushed to the ultimate defense, self-defense. Alright guys, so it's pretty legitimate. It hypes it up a little bit, uh, but... Yeah, that's pretty much what the movie is. Let's break down the plot. Like I said, I really enjoyed this movie. It's quite good. Let's see what it's all about. The film begins in the near future, and the police are on strike in a major city. We get some actual newsreel footage of a police strike, and are then introduced to an underground gay bar. Everyone is having a good time when suddenly a band of thugs enter the club. They call themselves the New Order, and go on a homophobic tirade and rough up a few of the patrons. Being a homo is not a normal way of life! That's the law of nature. We're not gonna just sit around and watch while you perverts go around corrupting decent people. We just want you and your boyfriends to know that you better get out now. The bartender, hoping to defend the patrons, pulls out a gun. The thugs regain control and a scuffle ensues. In the struggle, the bartender falls into a broken bottle and dies. No! Oh, you're gonna love this, sweetheart! No! Give me that! I'm gonna stick this thing right up your ass! Ah! Bastard! No! Ah! Bastard! Ah! Thugs panic and call their boss. When the boss arrives, he has all the patrons tied up and begins to execute them one by one. The last man manages to escape and runs to the streets, seeking refuge. He runs into a rundown apartment building and starts banging on random doors begging for help. He is let into an apartment where four friends are hanging out. Two of them are a couple named Horatio and Barbara, while the other two are visually impaired guys named Patrick and Steve. When the thugs come knocking on the door looking for the man from the club, Horatio could have easily said the man wasn't there. Instead, he tells them he won't hand the man over. The door is slammed on them. They then bust through the door only to find a rifle waiting for them on the other side. The thugs retreat, telling Horatio he's making a huge mistake. They leave the building and call the boss for guidance. He arrives at the apartment building with an arsenal in his trunk. 
Back at the apartment, Steve, one of the blind men, realizes he may miss dessert hour back at his boarding school. Against the wishes of his friends, he decides to head out. Once he steps into the doorway, he is shot repeatedly and dies. When the others find Steve's blood at the bottom of the stairway, they head back up to the apartment and prepare for the worst. A neighbor from the adjoining apartment helps the survivors by supplying them with weapons and explosives. In fact, he builds a rocket launcher and rigs the apartment with some booby traps, Home Alone style. The rest of the clan eventually gets their way into the apartment building, killing a defenseless civilian in the process. One by one, the civilians in the apartment knock off each of the thugs. One is shot with a crossbow, the other electrocuted. Believing they've defeated the gang and are now safe, the man from the club literally comes out of the closet. I'm sorry, I was afraid. Frustrated by the failure of his men, the boss enters the building to finish the job himself. Hiding in the shadows of a stairwell, he strangles one of the friends as he headed towards the exit. Eventually, it is Barbara, armed with a knife, who kills the big bad boss. In horror film style, the film ends by revealing that one of the thugs survived and is back on the beat as a police officer a month after the incident. So there it is guys, this movie is quite the roller coaster ride, it never stops. That's why I believe, like I said before, that I think it was intended to feel like real time. Awesome movie. There's a little bit of trivia with this movie, for instance, the newsreel footage in the beginning of this movie is actual newsreel footage from a real police strike in Halifax, Canada. Now in this movie, I don't think they, um, if they do, I don't remember, but I don't think they take note or, or mention a specific city that this is taking place in. I think they want people to think that this could happen in their own city. Um, certainly, so I'm not really sure what category this kind of movie would fall into. It's certainly not a post-apocalyptic movie like we've had like tons of those types of movies. It's sort of, I guess, a vigilante movie made in the spirit of movies like Death Wish, although Death Wish was just one guy. This seems like it's intended to be one of those anarchy in the city scenarios. Is there a subgenre for that? I'm not sure, but um, it's not the end of the world. It's just a police strike. But I think a lot of people wonder what would happen if the police kind of backed off. It's kind of like, I guess, those awful movies, The Purge. Here we have a more realistic scenario. What if the cops decided not to go to work one day because they were upset about wages or something you know that's something that could actually happen although it's against the law to do that now this movie actually has two directors their names are paul donovan and maura o'connell paul donovan is known for doing a lot of sci-fi stuff he made about 10 or 15 sci-fi movies one of them being defcon 4. he hasn't done that much over the years his credits on imdb are just 14 or 15 but he's been active in the sci-fi world i guess with the few productions he did do. His partner on this movie, Maura O'Connell, he or she worked on a few of uh, Paul Donovan's projects, such as DEF CON 4, but didn't really amount to do anything else in the industry, at least nothing that appears on IMDb. Now, there are a lot of actors in this movie that went on to do some great things. None of them are big Hollywood celebrities, but few of them did. Happy birthday to me. There's a few stars from that movie because this was, of course, a Canadian movie. This seems to be like a good luck charm for most of the cast in this movie because this was like their first or second or third movie they had ever done and they went on to have some incredibly flourishing careers in tv and movie so now according to imdb this had a theatrical release in the u.s in 1985 two years after the movie was made not really sure what the um delay was um, and it's unfortunate like i said i know i keep repeating myself but this is quite a good movie i suggest anyone to find it now the issue though i must say with this movie is that it is so incredibly dark. The entire movie takes place during the night. You gotta really pay attention to make out the faces. Now, I first watched this on YouTube, awful compressed version of the movie on there. And I do that so I can watch it on my television. I don't have my VCR directly hooked into the television, it's hooked into the computer. So then I was like, you know what, this movie just looks awful. Let me try, let me play the VHS and uh, I'll watch it on the computer. Still looked awfully dark. So, you know, it was just as bad almost as the YouTube version, so. This video or this movie really needs an upgrade. It needs an HD upgrade. It deserves it. It's a great movie and um, I can only hope for the best. I can imagine a bunch of labels out there that would, you know, if they had saw this movie, they would think that it was, you know, right for the picking. So yeah, guys, that's self-defense. Great movie. Had a lot of fun with it, mostly in real time. It's a thrilling ride and uh, you're rooting for the good guys, certainly. And um, it's a little bit different than most vigilante movies because these are people that just were in the wrong place at the wrong time. They weren't trying to do um, the right thing by killing the bad guys. They just had to defend themselves. I mean, the title is self-defense. So uh, most of the movie is them just trying to um, eliminate the bad guy so they could move on with their life. Um, they're kind of closed off and stuck in this apartment building. So yeah, there it is, guys. Totally recommend it. 
totally fun movie. Try to find the VHS. I mean, like I said, it's not that much better than the YouTube version, but if you have to watch it on YouTube, watch it. Although I think it'll leave a bad taste in your mouth because it's, it's an effort to try to watch it in that bad quality. So this has been Paul with VHSCollector.com. I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.